there is one comic strip that has the greatest readership in the country. There is one comic strip with which every child is familiar. There is one comic strip with a readership of over 60% adults, and that is Dick Tracy. This film is a sample of what you will see when you buy the Dick Tracy series. It shows some of the many characters, tells a few of the storylines, and illustrates faithfully what you are buying. Before we start, let's introduce Dick Tracy himself. You see, sometimes the police make it a point to appear rather dull, so they can get where they want to go much faster. And his wife, Tess, now Tess Tracy, formerly Tess Trueheart. Then there's Tracy's sidekick, Sam Ketchum. And here, of course, is our old friend, Diet Smith. Yes? No, 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 call me later. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Yes, yes, I got my emerald back. Yes, Diet did have some trouble with his emerald, which Blowtop had stolen. In fact, Blowtop's girlfriend, Breathless Mahoney, arranged for a fence named Pickett's to handle the hot emerald. Okay, honey, what's the bad news? Dick Tracy picked up Turk and the emerald. Oh, no! <laughs> I bet he must have fallen asleep again. Well, gentlemen, it would appear that we have no business to transact. I'm sorry, so if you'll pardon me, I think I'll be going. <laughs> oh, by the way, just in the event you are interested, I was prepared to go to $40,000. Even forty grand is a lot of dough. You'll never see it. Diet Smith has his emerald back. It may be that we can do business again at some later date. Good day, gentlemen. And ladies? There's plenty of action in this series. Here, two of Blowtop's boys, Con and Turk, are fighting over some stolen bonds. Well, I guess we missed Turk, but we'll get him. Yeah. Maybe we've got something better here. What is it? Money. Oh, it certainly is. Don't worry about Turk. He won't get far. I'll have a description on the teletype in ten minutes. After Turk escapes with the bonds, he takes them to the fence, pickets. Turk has just returned, either to get money or his bonds back. Oh, the double talk. All I know is I left some bonds with you, and right now I want them back. Well, I'm going to let you have it. Oh, please, you don't understand. Where are those bonds? Oh, they're, they're right there behind you. Stand right where you are. Oh, I'm shot. Call a doctor. Oh, yes, the Dick Tracy series has all the gimmicks the children love. Here's Gadgets, Shoulder's brother, an inventive genius, showing breathless Mahoney and Shoulder's a few of his inventions. Because sometimes I don't understand you myself. What's it for? This is a way to control heat. I still don't get it. Wait a minute. Watch this. It shouldn't take but a second. It works. Well, so what? Shoulders, this will make us all rich. Boom. What was that? Well, you leaned against this switch. What's it for? Well, that's for my automatic safety gate. Wait a minute, I'll show you something. See, when you leaned against the switch, you closed the circuit, and boom, my automatic safety gate went off. Go ahead, close it. <laughs> See, I told you the kid was a genius. Here's where Breathless Mahoney is in Gadget's apartment with the missing bonds. You're nothing but a dirty little killer. He was always good to me, and you shot him. Get back in that corner, you little rat. Who is it? It's Dick Tracy. Come on, let us in. What do you want? Come on, open the door. Okay, Breath, let's drop it. Drop it! Gadgets, you... I should have let you have it. Shoulders wounded in a gunfight is being taken care of by Dr. Weasel, friend of the underworld. Which one of you is Dr. Weasel? He is. Who are you? I'm Dick Tracy. What do you want? 
I want you for the stabbing of pickets. I don't know what you're talking about. And so Doc Weasel goes to jail. You may just as well know right now, Mr. Tracy. I think you'll find it impossible to hold me. We have a file on you too, Doctor. In the first place, you're guilty of practicing medicine while your license is revoked. I may trace you to Pickett's place where he was found stabbed and shot. Jewels matching the file of stolen goods issued by the insurance company were found in your possession. I should say, Dr. Weasel, that you should be good for about 20 years in jail. Yes, in the Dick Tracy series, justice always triumphs. Then there was the Dick Tracy adventure with Swami, who had captured Sam Ketchum, tied him up, put TNT under his chair, and wired the firing mechanism to a clock. Time is passing rapidly, Mr. Ketchum. In a few short moments, the clock will strike two. I want you to become very familiar with these chimes. Because when it strikes the fourth note in succession, you will be no more. Dick Tracy, of course, finds the Swami's office just one minute before the clock is to strike. Of course, Sam is saved after much suspense. Well, it looks like you fellas are in a hurry. Just a minute, sir. Who are you? I'm Dick Tracy. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Would you mind getting back in the office? Fondo, take care of Dick Tracy. One of the most familiar of all Tracy characters is Coffeehead. Coffeehead was robbing a series of banks when Dick Tracy and Sam Ketchum posed as bank officers. All right, relax now and take us down to the vault. All right, you guys, drop those guns. There was a time when Dick Tracy had his adventures with Flat Top. The crime syndicate found Tracy was in their way, and Nam Gibb, the mastermind, hired Flat Top to get rid of Tracy. That's what I said. Dick Tracy has got to be killed. The syndicate has just put up $10,000 for his scalp, and I'm getting the best gunman in the country to turn the trick. Who? <laughs> Why, Flat Top, of course. Being a man of action, Flat Top decided to go straight to Dick Tracy's home. Yes? Is Mr. Dick Tracy in? Yes, who's calling? I'm Bordeaux at the fingerprint department down at headquarters. Oh, no. Don't tell me it's business again. <laughs> Mrs. Tracy, believe me. This isn't for business. It's a pleasure. This way, please. Two men from headquarters to see you. Hey, copper. Tracy, you won't be needing this gun any longer. You're coming with us. After kidnapping Tracy, Flat Top tries to make the syndicate pay more money for Tracy's death. Listen, dollars pretty fast. You and your friends been making a lot of dough out of this town out of crime. If you can afford $50,000, you can afford $100,000, and that's my price. Why, that's ridiculous. Stay where you are, Ram Gibb. Well, Ram Gibb, why don't you give Flat Top the $100,000? I'm worth that much to you, Dad. Shut up, Tracy. Flat Top, can't you see? He's only trying to start a fight between us. So you won't kill him. Don't worry about it. I got him covered, and you too. Now get out of here. And don't come back till you got that 50 grand. Exciting Dick Tracy Adventures deals with car thieves. It all centered about a set of die-making tools stolen from Detroit, used to stamp serial numbers in automobile engines and bodies. Hijack was supposed to buy Ruff's little black bag of tools for $50,000. Instead, he decided to take Ruff and the tools. Dick Tracy and Sam Ketchum have tracked down the stolen car ring and have found Hijack and the tools. Put that back in the bag. Drop it back in there. Get over in that corner, both of you. Put your hands up. Come on, turn around. locks from the outside, so you're going to have a rough time getting out. Be careful, Sam. Yeah, but he 
to get away. No, no, I gave orders to have the building surrounded. Every exit's covered. He's in the car. Look out, Frank. He's going to run us down. But after a series of chases, Hijack is caught and brought to justice. If you hurt the man, get going. Tell me, Sam, what's been happening? Oh, plenty. Tracy killed Dope, and this guy killed Ruff. And then he pulled a fast one. What is that? Well, he had a secret panel in the garage wall. All right, my lad. In with you and quiet now. Give me a break. I got a bum leg. Come on, come on. Step it up in there. Then there were the Dick Tracy adventures with the mole, who lived in underground tunnels and owned a restaurant, at which one day Dick Tracy ordered a cup of coffee, which gave the mole an idea. I tell you what you do, Flub. You tell Tracy that the manager won't be back for, say, five or ten minutes. And why don't he sit down and have a cup of coffee on the house? Right. And now, Mountain. What? I got a job for you. That's all right with me. You just go out in the kitchen and prepare Mr. Tracy's coffee. Say, that's a good idea. Fluff, have you seen the boss around anywhere? Well, you're a mountain, aren't you? Yes, what about it? I want to have a little talk with you. What, police headquarters? No, I can talk to you right here and now. Fluff, bring me a cup of that jam. What do you know about a man named Chopper? Just what would you like to know about him? Well, I just want to know what you know about him. <laughs> it's coffee. It's sort of sweet. It, it's... It's a matter of trade me. can't stand up. No. Coffee, it's drunk. Dick Tracy's wife, Tess, came to the Moles restaurant to meet Diet Smith and Miss Frothingham. Everybody wonders where Dick Tracy is. Hello, Mrs. Yes. Tracy, so nice to see you here. I'm sorry I'm so late. Have either of you seen my husband? No, yet? he hasn't shown up yet. I wonder where he could be. Well, don't worry. He belongs soon. You said this was a cellar, and it certainly is. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Catcher. Won't you join us? Oh, thank you. Where's Tracy? Well, that's what we wanted to ask you. He hasn't showed up yet? Don't worry. Nothing ever happens to Tracy. He'll be in a little while. I hope so. Yes, this is the most marvelous piece of casting, you know? You can hear every sound of anything that touches it. Why, I hear a most peculiar noise. It most peculiar indeed. Wait a minute. That sounds like code. S O S T R A C Y Tracy. I guess I better finish you now, Carver. This is the end of you, drink, Tracy. To catch an enemy named Joker, the mole resorted to makeup. Oh, oh, that's fine. Look. Got a mustache, got, your, got the comb and the scissors. Everything else. Oh, <laughs> now I can make myself a beard. Well, Fluff, how does this look? It's wonderful. Nobody would know you. The Joker owned a magic shop, and Fluff went to see if all was clear. Oh, well, um, now you say you're having a party at 12 people tonight? Now, this little glass here is what we call a dribble glass. Have the people at the party get up, propose a toast. Everybody drinks, they all get wet. They'll always hate you, but believe me, sir, they'll never forget you. <laughs> oh, I'll be with you in just a minute, miss. Fluff told the mole that the Joker was wearing a false head. And now, Joker, I'm going to take care of you.
That was quite a switch, wasn't it? The mole killed the wrong man. And here's Red Groff, who tried to pull a fast one on the mole. How much dough do you want, punk? Ten thousand dollars. I'll take five grand right now. <laughs> Listen to that, fella. The punk wants five grand. I think you two guys ought to stay here and have a long talk with him. Maybe it'd be more reasonable. I got to go and check on that Dan. After all, I am in the restaurant business. <laughs> fitting plates, but he wasn't a printer, so he had his shyster lawyer, J. Blackstone Springham, bring in ZV Wheels, the best press operator in the country. Who's there? J. Blackstone Springham. Mr. Uh, ZV Wheels. Mole? Right. How'd you find out about me? Well, I was looking for a good counterfeit press operator. Max in Denver told me about you. All right, Shyster. Your job is finished. Scram. Oh, yes, of course. I was just leaving. Well, gentlemen, it's been an extreme pleasure working with such fine, high-class people. Oh, and uh, if I can be of any service in the future, uh, don't hesitate you to call. me one. Oh, yes, of course. So I did. Good day, gentlemen. Later, the mole took ZV wheels through the tunnels to the printing press, leaving Mountain to guard the precious counterfeiting plates. Here's the ink. I'm not needed here any longer, so I'm going upstairs. Mountain, I want you to take very good care of our guest, Mr. Wheels. And don't let those plates out of your sight. I won't. ZV wheels was a little too smart for Mountain. Wait a minute. You ought to die for this, Mountain. Well, what's the matter, Mole? He switched plates on you. He's got the real plates, and all I've got is a couple of pieces of metal. After long chases in which Mountain catches wheels, Tracy catches Mountain, and Tracy catches wheels. Dick Tracy and Sam Catchem finally trace down the Mole, and they figure the best way to catch him is to fill the underground tunnels with gas. Your oars right through here. Now we start giving it to him right away. Now just a minute, Murphy. Let's give him the mole a chance to get out. Call him. Well, all right. Boy, this is your last chance. If you don't come out of there with your hands up, they're going to start pouring the smoke to you. No answer. Okay, Murphy, go ahead. All right, boys, go right along with it and be careful and don't let that stuff out of there. Now you're all going to be sorry for it. And so the mole was forced out into the open where he had hidden an escape car. I've got you covered, Mole. As usual, there is a story with a moral. Crime does not pay. In fact, this is a point that is repeated over and over again throughout the whole Dick Tracy series. Crime does not pay. Some days work. Well, Tracy, looks like that's the end of the mole and his whole crew. Uh, so now I think I could use a nice, quiet evening at home. I think I'll just call Tess and tell her tonight I'm going to watch my television set. Dick Tracy is programmed 52 weeks a year. Dick Tracy will help sell merchandise. The sponsor is entitled to exclusive showings of Dick Tracy on television, and the sponsor may utilize point-of-sale displays, newspaper advertising, package wrappers, and billboards. These Dick Tracy films are prepared and edited with room for opening, middle, and closing commercials. Dick Tracy is completely merchandised. There will be monthly newspapers for the Dick Tracy fan clubs containing adventure stories, secret codes, puzzles, 
and every gimmick children love. The name of the local sponsor will be imprinted on the masthead, and the back page is so laid out that there is room for a sales message. This monthly newspaper will help build a loyal audience and move product. Qualitatively, there is no finer film made than these Dick Tracys. They were shot on the Samuel Goldwyn sound stages, utilizing all the Samuel Goldwyn crews. Dick Tracy is not only an adjunct to good programming, but it will build a loyal, regular audience for its sponsor.